morning. Welcome to Live for Five with Pastor Ben, a time when we get to spend a few moments in God's Word to shape our day. And uh, happy All Saints Day, or All Hallows Day, you might say. Uh, I, I always enjoy conversations around Halloween and the, the holiday of it, because so many, um, I, I've encountered many people who believe that Christians shouldn't celebrate Halloween, um, but there's just so much of the history that is unknown that Halloween is a Christian holiday. Now, not the way that it's uh, carried out today, for sure, uh, but the origins of Halloween, All Hallows' Eve, is connected to All Hallows' Day. Um, you know, before you had a watch and you could tell time... Uh, arbitrarily that the new day begins at midnight in the middle of the night, you would only be able to tell time by the sun. So when the sun went down, when the sun goes down today, it's Saturday in in the ancient way of looking at things. So you would celebrate the eve as the beginning of the day. So you, you have All Hallows Day, All Saints Day, and then it begins on the eve before, which was last night. So... Very Christian holiday, lots more to talk about on the topic, but um, nonetheless, let's make our beginning this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Amen. Well, if you pull out the Version Bible app, our verse of the day is from 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from sin. John is just working at another level. Theologically, he's teaching you things at another level. The Gospels are introducing you to these topics. John is, is working at a much, much higher level theologically. So to walk in light is contrasting to what was given to us in just the verse before, which in verse 6, John writes, If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. Well, this is the equivalent in meaning to saying live for the sake of truth. So as is, was very common in ancient rhetoric and probably should be re, start, we should reuse this, is you would say something to the negative and then you'd say the same thing to the positive to give the broad perspective of what it is you're saying. So in verse 6, John says, don't walk in darkness, instead walk in light. John references this so that his hearers may at once see that they truly belong to the fellowship of the light. Seeing this may also note who is in and who is not in light. What serves then for John's hearers and for us today is that there is an assurance but also encouragement to remain steadfast. At the same time, it, this strikes at all of these who have refused and have departed from this. Well, we see that for John, walking in light does not mean that those who do so never sin, but that we do not seek to hide that fact from God. This is something that our uh, Pentecostal and charismatic friends don't, they, they ignore this when it comes to this topic. They say that now that I'm walking in the light, I'm no longer a sinner. And the scriptures just don't really support that. And and it's not that, so Paul doesn't want to let you off the hook either. 
Should we go on sinning that grace may abound? He says you can keep sinning even in your state of being saved. So we, we're in this we're in this middle state where we know that we're sinners. We try to walk in light, but then we fail to walk in light. But all the while, why do we have this fellowship with one another? To encourage, sometimes admonish, all for the sake of continuing to remain steadfast in this walking in light, walking in the truth, remaining in the truth. Because God is light. This is one of the big metaphors that John pushes, is what light is. Light is truth, and that truth is found in God himself, who dwells in light, but that's just an idiom for saying that he is the light. It's just kind of a semantic point at that point. But this is then what the worship of the saints, uh, the worship by the saints is about is us gathering around the truth, gathering in the light to encourage one another so that we don't stumble and fall away, so that we don't turn to the darkness. We acknowledge what it is that we've done in thought, word, and deed, and we move along together. And what's at the center? Jesus and his blood. Well, that's a good norming place to start. So, uh... This this m metaphor would be f fruitful for us to meditate on today as we seek to be a fellowship with the light in fellowship with one another. It's, it's a beautiful illustration that's a lot easier to take with you than maybe some other big theological treatises or something like that. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, give us hearts to believe, to know ourselves as we are, that we would not walk in darkness, but we would seek your truth and your light, and that this would govern the fellowship of the saints that gather here at St. Paul's, but also throughout the world. We pray this in your Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. We Christians are coming to a time when uh, being bold for the sake of the gospel, um, we, we might take for granted how easily it is, easy it is for us to share our faith. Uh, to talk about All Saints Day or All Saints Eve as a Christian holiday, be able to defend it and give a reasoning for why this is a special holiday. It's something that we're going to need to dig into more, which is why that video I posted yesterday about Michael King and things like this might become something more of the products that we put out on social media and online. So blessings to you in Christ. I look forward to seeing you live in worship here and live here on Sunday morning. Bye for now.